I'm Craig Reynolds. Today, I'm in Bell Helmets in Santa Cruz, California, to take you on a tour and show you what goes into making a helmet. Now, it's more than what you might think, but for the company that made the first helmet, it's all in a day's work. Let's go ahead and take a look. I'm now inside the design center where I'm gonna meet up with Hilgard Mueller. He's head of industrial design and he's gonna show me how to design a helmet. Guess I'd better wear my glasses. Hey. hey I'm Craig. Hey, I'm Hilgard, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you as well. Listen, I see some really neat stuff in here. I, I saw a rapid prototype printer, CNC machines, digitizers. Where's the button that you press that magically pops out a helmet? Uh, it's not quite that simple, Craig. It's uh, we. It's a ground-up process that we've developed in, internally and at Bell, and it's uh, it's something I can you know I can show you the start of in the other room here and walk you through the entire process. Excellent. So if we want to design a moto helmet or a street helmet, what's the first step? What are we doing? Well, the first step with all of our projects is what is industrial design, and that that involves ergonomics, fit, styling. Um, you know, materials, trends, just kind of general trends in the industry. And yeah, it looks like you got a lot of sketches here, some clay modeling, I mean, foam, like what? Yeah, so this is kind of this is kind of where we explore our ideas and our designs. And a lot of our designs start with just 2D renderings with some concepts of, you know, maybe some new innovative ways to, to, to do some things. You know, one morning I could come into work and have an idea and just start carving it on a piece of foam, just straight out of my head, get a a shape down or a concept just in a piece of foam and I can share that with the team and you know and if they like it maybe I work into the next process which is you know these larger clay models that we do. Um, it's extremely hands-on, uh, it's world-class product you know the, the process we have here is, is extremely unique and you, you, it's not duplicated anywhere else. So we've got this design now we send it off and it gets built. We're, we're helmet ready now. No so we've, we've got this huge team here and it's, it's not as simple as just coming up with a concept and, and handing it off to get manufactured. What you know what we do is we're we're developing the initial gesture and then I'm I'm gonna work with my engineering group and I'm gonna have them engineer that gesture that to something that's manufacturable, safe, um, the components, every individual component works flawlessly and, and it's a very much a team effort. But who's the next player in this team that I need to go talk with? Because clearly uh, this uh, isn't uh, the final step. I'm going to hand you off to Greg Dean. He's the head okay. of our mechanical engineering team and uh, he'll walk you through his process. Hilgard, thank you so much okay. for your time. I really appreciate it. My pleasure. Great job, man. We'll Back see you soon. Time. Absolutely. So we got our design from the industrial design guys. Now we're going to go see Greg Dean. He's going to show us what's next. Greg. Hey. Hey, I'm Craig. Good to see you. How are you? Good. Excellent. Well, I just left Hilgard and he was showing us a lot of the designs and said that you are our next stop yep. in the process of getting a helmet made. Yes. So first off, what do we got going on right here? Okay, so this is a digitizer. So what this takes is Hilgard's hand, hand modeled half, half master. And then we take it on here, we put it on this touch probe scanner. It basically traces it across like a topographic map okay. and puts it into a digital format in the computer here. And so that's really taking it from a you know, handwork, really aesthetic model to a nice digital model that we can work on, dialing in for manufacturing. Okay, and then it comes back down here? Yes, exactly. All right, and now what is this one? This is a making a prototype? Yeah, this is a rapid prototype machine. So engineers will work on the CAD model uh, in, on the screen, and it's just like uh, you working in a Word document. You're typing up your Word document, yep. and you want to print out, you hit print, and it goes to a printer, and you get a, a nice sheet. Same thing, the engineers are working in a 3D format, though, and they can send to these printers, and it prints out three-dimensional parts. For example, an engineer could have this chain file up on the right. computer. They could send it down here and grow this part in a matter of two hours. So. Pretty fast. So in a matter of hours, roughly, you can get a different product with micro adjustments. Exactly. Okay, now I saw when we came in we had something for uh, for the helmet. Yes. So this is another yeah. example. Th this is one example of where an engineer really iterated apart. Um, so pretty small part on a helmet. Um, most people don't even think about these things, but yeah. we really look at the details of it. So this is where the liner attaches into the brow of the helmet. And we went through whoa, a number of <laughs> yeah, a whole bunch <laughs> number. And so, an engineer probably started with this one and like, ah, I want to change this, this, and this, and worked his way into a finished product that we're ready to release to production. So these different molds aren't just for looks; they're actually very functional. 
Yes, and once you guys you know, change them in and out, someone actually takes this helmet out and tests it out, right? Yes, exactly. So one thing in our test lab, like we'll have to uh, manage a penetration test. So it's a, a large dart that's coming at the helmet. And for every vent hole, it, this penetrator is trying to go through and puncture through the helmet and get to your skull. Obviously, we don't want that to happen. Clearly. So we're redesigning these parts, and that's another beauty of having different iterations. We can iterate it until this part, this area, passes that penetration testing. And having that test lab in-house makes it that much closer and that much easier for us to use. So no matter how cool a part may look or feel like it's functioning well, if it doesn't pass the stress test or the penetration rod, it's going to come back over here and you've got to redo it. Exactly. Okay, so that's my next step. It sounds like there's going to be some demolition going on over there. Yes, yeah. It's a fun room. i got to get over there. Greg, right. thanks for your time. Man. Thank you. Okay, we'll see you soon. See ya. During both the engineering and prototyping phase, the folks at Bell are constantly testing their designs and using the results to refine things before the helmet goes to production. That goes for small parts such as buttons and mechanisms, as well as the larger helmet systems like ventilation ducts and shell materials layup. We're at the test lab at Bell Helmets where they actually torture test the helmets to see how they perform. I'm going to catch up with Chris Sackett. He's going to explain how Bell Helmets uses this testing to make better helmets. How's it going? I'm well. How are you? Good. Excellent. Pretty neat stuff in here, i got to tell you. Oh, yeah. And all in an effort to make everyone safer. Yep. Cool. What are we going to look at today? Uh, right here, we're going to show you how we impact testing um, and we utilize that information to not only uh, do ongoing QC and batch testing, but we also do it for development. To make the helmets uh, perform better, more airflow, um, basically attenuate energies a lot better. For and how much feedback do you take in from consumers and riders? Do you take from what they're saying and apply it to the future technology? Oh yeah, our reps are constantly getting feedback from uh, consumers, riders. We're always fielding questions, calls, emails. Um, riders telling us how we think they think we can make our helmets better to suit their riding style. Okay. Well, let's take a look at this. I've been uh, I've been waiting for this all day. All right, we're, gonna uh, hit, uh, we're simulating a snow impact. Okay. So uh, the first impact is three meters. Um, it's quite high. You'll notice yeah, right. that the, the test rig goes right through the ceiling. All right, here we go. All right. Three meters. Oh. Yeah. Wow. You can see the importance of uh, wearing a helmet. Yeah, absolutely. I, in this day and age, as much information that's out there, I can't believe that people still don't wear helmets. Yeah, it blows my mind too. Yeah, oh, it's insane. After seeing this and just seeing some of the effects of head injuries have on people, you definitely, it, it shows you the real reason why um, we're here trying to develop helmets to make people safer out yeah. on the road. So this helmet's good, it, it passes the test. Oh yeah, it, okay. this, this helmet performs very, very well. Great. Um, we also have the penetrator test. See how heavy that is? It's just basically a big lawn dart. Yeah, that's got some weight to it. Yeah, so we'll no drop, doubt. We'll drop we'll that from let... the same height, the three meters. I'm, I'm ready when you are. Three, two, one. Woo! Wow. Wow. <laughs> All for safety, you guys do a lot. Oh yeah, we, we run up through every test possible. As you can see, it's clean as a whistle. Nice. If it were to hit, we'd have a little, a little uh, puncture wound there. Pretty amazing stuff. Oh yeah. Now what other kind of tests do we do in the lab? Uh, Non-destructive oh, testing no. as far as ventilation and, and shield mechanisms. So this test picture right here was developed solely just to test the hinge plates and the shield interaction and make sure that it's going to live up to the life cycle we we're expecting mm -hmm. it to. And we want it to okay. feel exactly the same as the first day you bought it, okay. five years after uh, you bought it. Well Chris man, you showed me some really neat stuff here yep. and I really appreciate your no time. Problem. Thank you. All right man, we'll take it. care, okay? All right, have a good one. All right. Well, now that we've gone through all the steps, the industrial design, the testing, and the prototyping, we're almost ready to make some helmets. But in today's market, a boring helmet just isn't going to cut it. And that's where creative director Casey Potter comes into play. He's going to show us how he transforms these works of safety into works of art. Casey, I'm Craig. Hey. How are you? Craig, good to see you. It's great to see you as well. Yeah, these are definitely works of art. These oh, are great. Thanks. thanks. Tell me yeah. a little about the helmets. Well, uh, we have 16 different models in the Bell line, and that translates into about 160 different colorways. And that ranges everywhere from, you know, your solid colorway like this, yep. all the way to something 
just totally crazy like the Psychomanic. Okay. So we have our in-house design team here is just constantly working on graphics. And we've, we've also started a uh, artist series where we have actual you know, fine artists, graffiti artists, designers who are designing helmet graphics for us also. So this one here is design done by Roland Sands. Uh, Roland is a custom bike builder. Uh, he's an artist, he's a designer, he's a fabricator. You know, he's just one of the most creative guys you'd ever want to meet. The Renaissance man of oh, art. The Renaissance nice. man, yeah. Right. Next we have Jimbo Phillips, who is a artist here in Santa Cruz. His dad was the original art director for Santa Cruz Skateboards really? back in the you know mid to late 70s. It's all in the family. Exactly. Right. This one is by Derek Hess. Now he's a artist from Cleveland. He's got a really, you know, just raw style that when I saw his artwork, I said, that is just killer and that would be awesome on a helmet. And this looks like it's, it's someone's tattoo. Well, it is. Uh, this is by Jonah Sirwinski and um, he actually has been quoted as saying that he likes to tattoo things, you know, <laughs> there you go. buildings, nice. uh, cars. Absolutely amazing. And I love the flowers. Yeah, this is uh, a design by Chris Wood. Now, Chris Wood is a very well-known painter and designer. Right. If you can't find something you like here, then... You just can't find I, it, right? Yeah, that's just not out there. Hey, man, well, thank you for your time. Thank you. I really appreciate it. Yeah. Amazing, amazing look here. And Thanks. Like I said, I'll take one of each. And, uh, okay, I'll we'll wrap those up. We'll have I'll leave my address for you to you know, <laughs> ship them on out. All right. Well, there you have it. That's how a helmet goes from an idea to production ready. And Bell Helmets does it all right here in Santa Cruz, California. I'm Craig Lemons from Bell Helmets reminding you to get good training, ride within your limits, and wear your gear. Peace.